What's up, Redemption fam? This is Pastor Aaron. And once again, I want you to push pause as you're scrolling through social media and just listen to a pastoral encouragement. In this time, I want to speak into your hearts and into your lives, both who you are and how you are to live as his people. I want to remind you of something. Right now, we live in a world that's filled with anger. Everybody's angry. And you're not excluded from that. I'm not excluded from that. It just seems like we are talking past each other and everything we say, we're reacting in anger. Anger is the dominant emotion of our culture and our world right now. What can happen is because so many people are saying, I'm angry because God's angry, is that we're pointing to God and showing that he gets angry. I don't want to say that God has never acted in anger because there's actually scriptural evidence towards that. But I do want to say he's not an angry God. I want to read to you Psalms 145 verse 8. And this is actually only one of the many times in scripture that it says this same type of thing. You could go into Google search and just type in God slow to anger verses and you'll see how many times this is mentioned. But look at what it says. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. What this shows us, the psalmist shows us and many other sections of scripture that when God reveals himself, he doesn't reveal himself as an angry God. He reveals himself at default He's a God of love. God is love. God is gracious. God is merciful. And he's slow to get to anger. And when he gets to anger, it is rooted in love. I want you to think of how many times God has treated you with that kind of love and grace and mercy. And then when he's acted in anger, it's been because he's disciplining you as his child because he loves you. You have not been in relationship with an angry God or an angry father. You have a loving father who has poured out an ending, abounding love upon you. Now, because that is true of you, because that is true of me, I know that I am loved by my father. I can show that kind of love to a world that deserves anger. Why could I do that? Because I deserve his wrath. But instead of giving me his wrath, He gave me grace through his son, Jesus. Jesus took my wrath and he gave me grace. How amazing is it that I have a father who would do what is needed to be done and take upon himself all of our sin and give us grace. So I am not saying they don't deserve anger. What I am saying is we didn't learn it from how we've been treated. I'm not even saying there's not times that we should act in anger. But we should definitely be slow to get there because we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the fruits of that spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. We should not be known as a people who are angry. Now, it doesn't mean we never get angry. It just means that shouldn't be our default because our God's default is not anger. He's slow to get there. He's known for love and grace and compassion. And that doesn't mean we're soft in a pushover. What that means is we know by looking at God what that looks like. People don't teach us what love is. God has taught us and imparted into us love. So I just want to challenge you and us together. How are we walking by default in this world? Are we walking on edge, ready to snap off every time somebody does something we don't like? Or do people see the fruits of the Spirit and the love of Christ in us? That when we get angry, it means something because it was slow to get there. 
church, let's walk as representatives of our Father in this world. Let's do His work His way. Let's live a life of love and grace and mercy. And when it's time to be angry about something, let's get there, but let's get there slowly. Church, it's time for us to live as our Father has called us. God bless you, fam. Have a great week.